amidst what appears to be not a lot of attention or even fanfare, Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk are set for an undisputed showdown on Saturday, May 18th. This fight will finally, after 20 plus years, bring together the heavyweight title. Let's talk about it. After many delays and a postponement due to a cut in training, on Saturday, May 18th, Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk will finally come together to unify the heavyweight championship for an undisputed champion. This is a fight that has been anticipated, but not necessarily highly revered or even talked about because both men at the top of the division have different sorts of personalities and backgrounds that don't necessarily advertise as must see. However, when the two of them come together to compete for this place in history, it is going to be a contrast of not only personalities, but styles that bring them to this championship opportunity. Fury's entering with his record of 34 and 0 with one draw and 24 KOs. Usyk is entering with his record of 21 and 0 with 14 KOs. Think about it like this. Fury has been as advertised the best big man in boxing as far as his height, the weight that he carries, and the reach and strength. He is not necessarily entering this fight as the most gifted between the two boxers. That would go to Alexander Usyk, who has shown himself to be from the amateurs to turning professional in the cruiserweight division and becoming undisputed there to now a unified heavyweight champion. It has always been a story for the heavyweight division that the best of the big men have typically come from around that light heavyweight to heavyweight division, the in-between. Joe Lewis was six foot, 180 pounds, plus 190. Muhammad Ali, when he turned pro, he was like 206 to 208 pounds and went all the way up to 212, 215. Evander Holyfield, who started out at junior heavyweight, became undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world and then undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, five-time heavyweight champion of the world. So this match is going to see these two men come in. Fury, in his last outing against Francis Ngannou, many people felt he took Ngannou lightly, didn't train as hard as he should have, and the effects of that were shown during the match. He found himself downed early in the fight and struggled to go on to win a very highly contested decision. However, what he also did in this fight was he won a fight that he could have lost 
and that has to do something for confidence and motivation factor because now he will enter this fight with something to prove. But the only problem is, is the person that he's going in to prove against happens to be the number one heavyweight in the world according to the performances in Alexander Usyk. He has established himself being a southpaw, six foot three, and roughly around 220 plus pounds. If you consider his previous performances, just as when he fought Daniel Dubois, Usyk can make adjustments on the fly during a fight. He is able to control the distance of his fights with his southpaw jab and his lead foot which he never leans over in front of that front knee and he's able to use the mobility of his footwork a lot like what Dimitri Bivol does at 168 pounds. In fact, some of their footwork is mirroring in their stylistic manner of fighting. There is a way to defeat that easily. However, I don't know that Tyson Fury has the flexibility to be able to do so. Both fighters have incurred knockdowns recently. Fury against Ngannou saw himself on the canvas having to rise and recognize that he was in against a threat that he made dangerous, not necessarily Ngannou. Taking a fighter lightly, this is what can happen. Fury was not hurt in that situation only his pride and ego. As I stated earlier, he got up and managed to go on to secure a win with the assistance of some of the judges and Ngannou not knowing or having the experience to know how to finish a fight strong in order to give favor and decisions. Against Dubois, there was a controversial circumstance where Dubois hit what appeared to be low on the belt line for Usyk that sent him to the canvas writhing in pain. But as the referee took the time out to acknowledge it as a low blow, Usyk was able to do as much as he could to milk the time. Personally, I had always professed that if it had been scored a body shot knockdown, he would have gotten up inside of a count with the ref. But being that he was fighting, I believe it was in Poland at that time, and he was able to milk the crowd and everything going on to finish Dubois with a later round stoppage after Dubois was not mentally strong to pull through those circumstances that he faced during that fight. These two men, as I stated earlier, have contrasting styles. Fury is an outboxer, believe it or not, and he can do things physically that some big heavyweights such as he can't get away with. His footwork is quite nimble. He can punch in combination, though he hasn't done it in a while, in a few fights. And he doesn't have one punch knockout power, but he's strong because of his size and his build, his frame. From what I've seen, it looks like he's dropped a ton of weight to come into this fight, and he may be looking to box Usyk, having dropped all of those pounds and look to be faster than he has been as of recent memory. But the thing about it is, he can't outbox Alexander Usyk. Usyk is the most solid boxer between the two of them. So this coming Saturday, the 18th, is going to be a fight where we get a chance to see who can bring the best out. And I'm here to say that I actually believe that history is on the side for Alexander Usyk. I think he's gonna repeat the feats of Evander Holyfield and become an undisputed champion from both the cruiserweight and the heavyweight divisions in boxing. And if he doesn't, he still has had a great run, but that's who I think. But what do you think? This is Stormy B-Man. Shout out to the mighty 
LDBC and Liberated Perspective, the third eye view of the world. Peace to everyone out there and everyone please remain safe.